Muslim kids have a huge untapped potential to change the world. Sister Ariba Farheen, the founder of Iman Power that operates from Australia. Iman Power teaches Islamic values to Muslim kids all over the world using modern education methods and creative techniques. Iman Power believes that children have an untapped enthusiasm and energy that if I put together to good use, they can usually make great changes, inshallah. They just need a little assistance and guidance from us. We need to challenge them to do something greater and harder than just excel at maths and science. Iman Power's ultimate goal is to see children everywhere working together and working to make a difference. Please welcome Sister Ariba. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You can hear me clearly? Yes, we can, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for that introduction and I'm very glad to be here. Mashallah, you guys have done an excellent job. And I apologize for being a little late. I was actually taking a class. Um, my name is Ariba, as the sister um, told you, I'm the founder of Iman Power. And as she um, explained already, Iman Power is an organization with a vision to empower children with the power of Iman by educating them and to use their Iman to work in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I strongly believe that the children working together for the right cause can make a huge difference in the world, just like us adults can. And that's what I've set out to do with Iman Power. A few years ago, I told a friend of mine that I wanted to teach Islam full time. And I had no idea how I'm going to do that. And the friend told me that it's impossible. But I knew that if I had, if I want it and I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it, he will eventually lead me to it. So I said to my friend, yes, it does seem impossible and I don't know how I will get there, but I am 100% sure that I will get there, inshallah. And it's just been two, you know, three, four years since then. And Iman Power is two years old, alhamdulillah. And in these two years, children have done incredible things and I've taught thousands of children practically from many different countries from US to Australia to UK to Canada Saudi Arabia UAE Singapore New Zealand I was just not taking a class with children from Canada to UAE in different countries and these are some pictures showing you the great work the kids have done from doing Dawa projects um, to helping doing projects to help the environment like uh, growing trees spreading seeds Polished, working on recycling projects and in one of the courses that I just did we raised uh, money to help 70 orphans each child took on to sponsor an orphan alhamdulillah and they achieved that in just short time of three weeks and um, in last year in Ramadan we raised money for water wells we alhamdulillah raised about nine thousand dollars and this is all effort very little from me but mostly all from the children and a lot from their mothers. You know, as a lot of the time we hear the saying called behind every successful man is a woman. I think behind every successful child is a mother or sometimes even a father. <laughs> but most of the time, alhamdulillah, there's a very, very supportive and successful mother. And so how did this happen? How did I come from something so far apart from um, it, uh, this to teaching Islam to children all over the world. Well, knowledge, this webinar is about knowledge and I think knowledge is incredibly powerful. It can bring life to your heart and the lack of it can kill, you, kill the heart. And <clears throat> of course, it's not easy to get knowledge. It's a hard, long, hard path. And this is the story of my hard path. A few years ago, I was in a job working like a mad woman, absolute alcohol, workaholic, or alcoholic, <laughs> workaholic. I had a great, I had great success in that job and absolutely loved it. And I was promoted to a director, which meant even more work, even more busy. But then after four years working there, I decided it's time for a change. I had left that project after four long years on working on the same project. And now I realized in the new job that that project meant nothing to me now. It meant nothing. I had sacrificed so much with my time with my family, so many hours of my life, so many days. I could have used that time to come closer to Allah. I asked myself, for what did I give up all this time and energy for? What were all those four years for? Money, that's it. And this question kept haunting me, like when, you know, and different things happened during those years, which just, you know, made this question stronger and stronger in my heart. 
I question what was my real intention for working. Is it really for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And mind you, I was still volunteering. I was still teaching Islam at a Sunday school for probably about seven or eight years at that time. And I was giving more and more money in charity every year. But what bothered me was my intention for working was not for the sake of Allah. I spent my time every day in a struggle, but that struggle was not for the sake of Allah. And as Muslims, we are meant to struggle with everything we have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why am I using all the skills, time, and energy Allah has given me? Am I using the energy and skills and time Allah has given me for his sake? I just kept questioning myself. One day, as I was thinking this, I was sitting in the masjid, and I was wondering about all this, and a friend came in. We started talking about work, how hard it is, and all that. And she said, Ariba, we have taken an easy way out. I'm like, what? Easy way out? <laughs> how is this easy? Our jobs, by no means, are easy. And she said, we have taken the easy way by taking these jobs. The harder thing would have been to do, to, have find, to find a way to make money and to support ourselves, but still working in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is easier to just go and find a job in the Nia and make money. But it is much harder to struggle and look for a way to work for the community and still be able to support yourself. But it can certainly be done. And it takes people who are determined and who do not have fear. Except for the fear of Allah, of course. They go fearlessly, they grow bravely, determined to make it happen. That hit me. Have I taken an easy way out? Why am I spending all my time, wasting my time, energy for something that is of little benefit to me on the day of judgment? So I decided to change things now. I had always wanted to teach children. That's where my true passion lies. I absolutely love teaching children. I changed jobs and took a part-time job, which meant much less money, but more time to develop more to develop something on my own on this path. It was an extremely difficult decision for me to letting go of my career, but I knew I had to do it. As, and as soon as I decided, Allah opened doors for me. I got to attend this business seminar in London. Some of you may have heard about it, Nishira by Sheikh Mohammed al-Sharif. And I launched Iman Power straight after Nishira with the determination to do something great to empower children and use their Iman power to achieve great things in the path of Allah. And within six months, I came from having no idea what to do and how to do to having a wonderful vision and a wonderful project which had already benefited so many children. Then within six months, I had reached the lives of so many children and it made a difference. I never saw myself as a very creative person before, but that might just have been because my heart was not ever really in what I was doing. And when I started teaching Islam, now today I'm full with amazing ideas, which Allah has inspired in me. It is amazing to spend time learning and teaching Islam. And what a wonderful gift Allah has given me, alhamdulillah. I'm not saying it is wrong for us to work in a job that has um, on anything except something for the Muslims. But I'm only asking a question. Muslims are suffering in all around the world, in many aspects of life. Our children are getting lost. Families are breaking apart. Violence and humiliation is like a norm for us today. There's all kinds of problems are Ummah is suffering and is in great need. Nobody else is going to come and help us. Our Ummah is in need for Muslims like us to use whatever skills, time, and energy we have to stand up and lead projects to lift the Ummah back to where it belongs. So is it really right for us right now to be devoting our life to anything except for the benefit of our Ummah in who is in need? Is it not an obligation for us to use whatever time and energy we have, skills we have, in whatever area we can for the sake of Allah alone? What excuse can we possibly help have <clears throat> Last words I would say to you is to go forth, trust Allah, ask Allah for help, and take action. You will take one step and then see how Allah opens the doors for you.
I often felt alone when I started. And even now, I feel like I'm the only one, like, you know. But whenever I felt that I went and I went and cried out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then everything became much easier. You may not have a big team, especially when you're starting out. You, it requires a lot of courage to do that, to take that step. And you are alone. You, feel, you might feel weak. And you know, if I have felt that I have to do this alone, I probably would have never taken even the first step. But I always knew that Allah will help me. That's the only reason I took even that step and I keep going on. You may not have a big team today of people helping you, but you have Allah on your team. So who else do you need if you have Allah on your team? During Nishiro, Shaykh Muhammad Ashri said something to us which I've never forgotten. He said the Sahabas, when they fought, they were equivalent to 1,000 men. And that's how we should work. That we are equivalent to 1,000 men in our work. This is what I tell the children as well. When you study, when you're going to school, don't just work like your peers. You are a Muslim with the power of our Iman, with the help of Allah. We should be able to do the work of what 1,000 people would do. It may be a struggle to do this, but make it your jihad for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To achieve your goal of our house near the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this work that you're doing. So I'll leave you now with one action, one step to take. Think about it. What is that you want to do in the world? What is the work that makes your heart come alive? Now, what is stopping you from doing it? Is it really the circumstances? Is it really absolutely impossible to even take one step? Or is it just you who is stopping yourself? Think about it today and take that first step, inshallah. And Allah will make the rest of the path easy for you, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. That's it from me. I know the slides went a bit wacky, but it's okay. I hope you guys didn't mind. Zakallah khair. For having me and I'll see you soon. Salam alaikum.